Welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D-Lo, and today we have a very special bro talk for you guys. My good brother, Brady. Brady. What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's going on? <laughs> so this is totally unplanned. I came over, it's like 9.30 at night, Yep. and my brother's coming into town tomorrow, and he tells me he wants to make a video with me before my brother gets here, just so we can say that I made a video before him. Yeah, and it's kind of punishment for him moving away, so dang you, Kyle. Yeah, I'm kind of cool with this. So. Yeah. Dang you all to heck. Do <laughs> <laughs> a PG now. Yeah, we'll do a PG. <laughs> so let me just uh, kill the monitor real quick. Okay, so... Um, Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to be talking about the Justice League today. So that's one of our favorite uh, topics. And I think, honestly, if we're, all, if we're all being honest, and even outside of, like, movies, outside of, like, the movie realm, the Justice League is probably the greatest team on Earth. I would argue maybe next to, like, you could say the X-Men. Some people would say, like, the Fantastic Four. But I think the Justice League is probably the greatest team of superheroes ever put together. And it's like, it's just, it's so perfect. It's Batman, it's Wonder Woman, it's Superman, Green Lantern, Hawkgirl. Yeah. You know, like, you can go down the list, Martian Manhunter. It doesn't get cooler than Martian Manhunter. Like, I, believe me, I love Vision, but he is a second-class Martian Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he's not a Martian, so. Yeah, he's not a Martian, he's not a man, and he doesn't hunt for much, except for Scarlet Witch. I think, but yeah. it's almost like she's hunting him at that point. She's the one that makes him a real boy. Yep. <laughs> But, um, yeah, and, like, I grew up watching all the cartoon series of Justice League and Young Justice and all that stuff, Justice Unlimited. And mm -hmm. so, like, as a kid, which is, like, before the Avengers came out, like, that was my superhero group that I loved and just, like, oh, it was so good. Totally. And it was everything I wanted as a kid. Like, I couldn't stop watching it. It was perfect. And yeah, that and, like, the Batman animated series. I have all of those on DVD. I, I totally know you do. I'm super jealous. <laughs> I super want that series. But, like, things like that, I mean, we all grew up on. DC has forever and always been masters of the animated. You know, like, all of their animated stuff, all their TV shows, all the animated movies, it's gold. All of it's gold. You know, I haven't seen one so far where I was like, that was weak. You know, like, every single one got me super hyped, and I was just... I was thrilled. Yeah, and the Batman one that we previously talked about, I remember when I was younger, my brother and I, we used to like, we used to go to bed, my mom would be like, okay guys, don't stay up late and watch TV. He's like, yeah, okay mom. And the first thing we put on was that Batman animated series, and I swear mm -hmm. we would watch it like all night and just like eat junk food and all that kind of stuff, every single night. And we like couldn't put it down, it never mm -hmm. got old, never got boring, and never it was like, well, we're getting used to this. It was so good from the first episode to the last. Totally. And it's, it's rewatchability is timeless. Like, uh, and, and it just, like, especially for those of us who grew up on it, because then it has the nostalgia factor, right? Then, then it's like, it's so special because it's like, it's, it's one of the first superheroes you were introduced to, you know, like if it, whether it's like Spider-Man, whether it was Superman, whether it was the Hulk, whatever it was, um, especially for Batman, because he just has such a nice rogues gallery too. all of his villains. Yeah. They're so like, they're so unique and creative and uh, for most all of them, you know, they're pretty dark, even for being in a kid's show. It's like you get the Joker. Um, the Riddler was not painted to be so dark, but you get characters like the Penguin. It's dark, but it's fun. It's like, yeah. It's, it's not so dark that it's not fun. You're just like, oh my gosh. But like, there's still a lot of fun aspects. So like, even the Joker, who's like incredibly dark, mm -hmm. he's funny and it's fun. Yeah. You know? Totally. And like, like you said, the Riddler's not as dark. Like, he's kind of twisted, but he's mainly fun. Yeah. Exactly. And the Penguin's pretty dark, too, especially like in some of the older Batman movies. It was pretty dark but mm -hmm. um yeah it was just and to, I, I think like to coordinate this back to the movie the justice league film i had such a fun time watching i know there's a lot of people out there that criticize the film for its its flaws and it's obvious like i mean steppenwolf was i think probably a bad choice and then there's the whole director situation um you know like uh zach snyder having to step down and then joss Whedon having to step up and, and take the place and some people speculate whether or not it was set up beforehand and it was a, a, a falsification of the story maybe his daughter didn't get hurt there's some people that are conspirators and they, they think these things and whether or not it's true whether or not it's confirmed what happened happened and joss had to step up and it was a split directorship but as far as far as the heroes mm -hmm. i feel like they they've really stepped up you know <laughs> warner brothers has struggled with some of their hero films for a little bit um and as fun as they are, there's there's flaws. Yeah. But, man, 
I was really excited to see Cyborg and The Flash and Wonder Woman. Everybody loved the Wonder Woman film. I mean, that's almost like... It was a good DC movie. It was a really good DC movie. Probably the best one since uh, Man of Steel. Yeah. And, you know, like, which I totally loved. I love Man of Steel. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, like, I wanted to ask you... So, like, going into the movie beforehand, everyone was skeptical and speculating about um, who's going to be the extra hero, you know? Obviously, they were teasing long beforehand that Superman was going to return, yeah. but in the trailers, they're like, who's Commissioner Gordon talking to? Is it, you know, is it going to be Green Lantern? Is it going to be Martian Manhunter? You yeah. know, who's it? Who's that person that came to Earth? Is it? Is it the... Uh, um, Thanagarians? Yeah. You know, the Hawk Girl, Hawk, Hawk Man, all yeah. that stuff. But um, I know, for you, Martian Manhunter is like... That's my man right there. That's your man right there. <laughs> and all the TV shows, Martian Manhunter was the best. Dude, and he was, was the reason we watched Supergirl. Yeah, he really was. I was like, who's Supergirl? <laughs> but, um, yeah. but when I grew up watching that show, Martian Manhunter stuck out to me so much. And when I heard there was going to be a Justice League, I was like, oh my gosh, like my heart stopped. I was so stoked for it. Oh and my I saw... gosh. Your heart stopped? <laughs> Shannon. Should sorry. I'm my wife. Kidding. I'm sorry. He's yeah. uh She's getting sassy. She, she's kind of jealous of having a bro talk. Yeah, she's jealous of having it. She's jealous of the bros right now. <laughs> so, as for Martian Manor, I was really bummed he wasn't going to be in it, and then I had some hope, like, oh, maybe we'll come in at the end and stuff. Yeah. And then, But then I saw that, like, Cyborg was in there. I was like, well, then somebody's going to have to get cut because they can't throw more than seven people in there because that's just not right. And I yeah. love Cyborg. I think he's super dope. But I feel like maybe he should have came in in, like, a second movie because he's more part of, like, Young Justice than he is of, like, original seven Justice League. Mm -hmm. And so he got a later start into the team. Yeah, but wouldn't it have been cool if they had the original seven in Justice League? Yes, and then they made a second Justice League and then incorporated Cyborg because he was like comes later on. Yeah, and that would have been like really cool for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like as much as I was so stoked for that movie, I was a little let down. But I wasn't completely like I would watch it again. It was a really good movie. Mm -hmm. But the whole Martian Manhunter thing, and then also the guy who played Flash was Ezra Miller, I believe. Yeah, he did a lot better than the TV series Flash. Because, oh, like, yeah. when I think of The Flash, like, reading comic books or uh, the old Justice League, he's supposed to be, like, really funny and, like, yeah. kind of flirtatious. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just who he is. And the one of the TV series is, like, some emotional little skinny boy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, like... Yeah. I love yeah. Grant Gustin, but he, you know, it's a different it's a different type of, of Flash. Yeah. The whole you Flash know, just felt weird, like, different. It's you know? it's the CW Flash. It's a yeah. different type of Flash. I love, I love that character. I love that storyline. But I, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's like, it's not the comic book version. Yeah. It's definitely a CW brand of Flash. I watched all of The Flash, and it was a good show. I'm not saying it's not. It's a good show. It just, when I hear The Flash, like, that's what comes in my head, and then when I didn't see it, I was like, oh, okay, well, it's still good, it's just not, like, The Flash that I was hoping for. Mm. But the guy who played in Justice League, Ezra Miller, actually did a really good job of being funny, and... He wasn't flirtatious at all. Like, he, he didn't have anyone to flirt with. I would make that, make that argument. Wonder yeah, I feel, and that's, like, well, that's the other point, is that... Starting the he Justice would have played League. On, no, he would have played on Wonder Woman. Like you know, we're making a video. We're right? making a video, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can get this uh, three-way conversation. Yeah. It's a special bonus feature for you guys. We know that DC and Warner Brothers, I'm, as zealous as they were to jump on board and get their Avengers started, they were trying to hustle it. And it's not always formula. You know, it's not always about how you set it up. It's about how you execute it. You, know, like, um, you can talk about like. Um, Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. having almost the same yeah. exact setup. Yeah. You know, we didn't get to know the Guardians before the Guardians. Yeah. We just got the Guardians and everybody fell in love with them. Yeah. And it was kind of an execution thing. Um, whereas in Suicide Squad, which I liked a lot, but the population, every, everyone out there wasn't as much a fan of that as they were of Guardians, right? Yeah. So it's, um, you can look at just, it's, it's sales alone, you know, yeah. it and shows, it shows that it didn't grab people as much as it grabbed maybe like yeah. us, you know, some of the DC fans that are, we go to these things once, twice, three yeah. times. And, and I feel like if you're not as into it, so like when Guardians came out, it was easy for people to love because you had like what, three or four characters kind of thrown in there, kind of new, but like you didn't really have much backstory about any of them, but it was like. That almost like the backstory didn't matter because what was starting right then and there was all you needed to know. It was when like the Guardians come together. Yeah, yeah. And then as for like the Suicide Squad, like if you know DC Comics, you know all the characters. But a lot of people don't know some of those characters and they all got thrown into a movie with no backstories. Yeah. They only got like these really quick snapshots of like, 
this guy went to prison for this, caught by this guy. And that's like, that yeah. was it. That's all you know about him. And it's know? literally like a file that you yourself read. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you it's like, read it. It's it like, was, you better pause it and read it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a short, it's like a, it's almost like, it almost felt like a cop out. It's like, yeah. You know, like you want to see them beat people up and do this, and they yeah. get like a two second snip. You know, and yeah. obviously they're pressing for time and that yeah, kind exactly. of stuff. Yeah, Almost like it could have been a two part movie if they really wanted to, but at the same time, it's like you have like seven, eight, nine characters. It's hard to do like a two part movie with like mm -hmm. trying to do backgrounds of all those people. So, like, I understand. I loved the movie. I liked Will Smith in it. At first, when Dude, I saw right. it, and I was like, they're just putting him in there, like, high budget, like, trying to get people to go watch it. Oh, totally. That's what everyone thought. And, and then I, I saw it, and too. I was like, this guy's like a perfect dead shot. Like, holy cow. He was actually my second favorite character. I mean, you talk about like Harley Quinn stealing the show for real. And then, and then, and Margot Robbie did an amazing job. Yeah. But Will Smith then was like right there with her and just, he killed it as dead shot. Like yep. amazing. Great Floyd Lawton. You know, like yeah. the costume was really good. Whoever did the costumes for Suicide Squad, I will say I loved the costumes for Suicide Squad. It was really good. The Joker looked amazing. I think that was everyone's number one complaint actually was that, they they hyped up the Joker hype for the for the DC universe so much in Batman vs Superman with the writing on the walls and the Robin suit and Robin's dead and something happened and Batman's off the rails and we don't know why he's killing people and it's all dark 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 because of the Joker and then we get a movie with the Joker you know and it's like yeah it, it, and then we don't get any story you know we didn't get anything on the Joker yeah. we got like a quick clip of him torturing. Margot Robbie, and then we get a quick snap of him, you know, with his with his thugs and his goonies, and he's trying to, you know, get in there a little bit, but he's not even the main bad guy. Yeah. You know, he was just a side plot. Yeah, and, and especially so, in Suicide Squad, like, you, you would think, like, he would be the main bad guy because it's, like, they kind of advertise it, but he was barely yeah. in that movie. Right. But at the same time, like, a lot of people didn't like him. Him as an actor, as a Joker, I actually, I, I liked him fairly well. He's like, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, well, he's not Heath Ledger. I'm like, okay, well, nobody's going to be Heath Ledger. No right? one's going to be Heath Ledger. But <laughs> the aspects of the Joker, like, being, like, insane, and not just, like, fooling, playing insane, like, he's literally insane. Like, twisted yeah, insane. Yeah, he's pretty crazy. Like, he didn't, yeah. he didn't give off a vibe of anybody normal that I would know. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, and he, like, I mean, you can say what you want about, like, Jared Leto being a freak and all the stuff he did backstage and all that stuff, like, with the, the sending, like, yeah. dirty, like, gross, like, poopy stuff, like, all kinds of nasty stuff. What? He was, yeah, he did some weird stuff because it, it's method acting. When you're method acting, you get into, um, you know, you, you, you dive into that part. If you're playing a marine, you go live on a base. You know, you, you go do, you live the life. You do the runs, that's you push ups, and all that stuff. Method act, like, but <laughs> like, yeah, he he did method acting. I mean, that's kind of what the Joker Heath Ledger did too, and that's why he was so great. And honestly, Heath Le or uh, Jared Leto's Joker, I thought was great. I thought he was awesome. But they they sidelined his character and they didn't give us enough. Yeah. To actually grab like his. Uh, you could you could argue you didn't even understand the motivations of the Joker, and the motivation of the Joker is supposed to be a mystery. It's like he is evil for the sake of evil. Like he doesn't like a lot of things he ha he does aren't even like for a purpose. He just does them because he does them. It's like yeah, you know, like some people have like a certain like you hear a lot of characters they want to take over the world or like they want something like that. You don't hear Joker say stuff like that. Like he just no. does like stupid dangerous stuff yeah. just because he wants to. Like he's a creep. He's a total creep, and he doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be president like Lex Luthor. He doesn't want all the money in the world. He just wants to be bad and hurt people, and that's the scary part of the Joker. Like Is Lego he... Batman. Like you yeah. remember that at the end when the whole story's about like I just <laughs> I want you to hate me like pretty much like that yeah. relationship. But there's nothing special about like he's not try like I said he's not trying to take over anything or not trying to destroy anything. Like mm -hmm. he almost does it for the pure joy of just annoying the heck out of Batman and like challenging him totally. and everybody around him and just completely going crazy and I think he takes like well I'll say like joy but I mean I'm pretty sure he does yeah he gets his sick kicks out <laughs> yeah exactly being the enemy of Batman and he's <laughs> he's like one of the exact like you you could make him the exact definition or representation of what an arch enemy is yeah. Batman and the Joker that's his arch enemy that is like that is the complete rival you know and it's like not not in skill but in like in motivation and in purpose, yeah, you know, and it's like it, uh, it's so cool, and so I, I feel like in in the Justice League, when when we get a villain like Steppenwolf, we we don't really understand even in the movie all throughout the movie, you don't really get to know what a mother box even is. You just get to know that it's a power source. That's it. What can it do? Apparently, it's really bad, and apparently, we it can if you get them all together, it can have the power to destroy worlds. Yeah. You know, and it's like, they're going to terraform the world, 
But it's like, it's kind of the same plot that was in Man of Steel. They're going to terraform the world. Yeah. Sure. You know, so it's like... I feel like Steppenwolf is throwing way too quickly. And yeah, and it's, yeah, and it, it all felt kind of like, it felt rushed, but it felt rushed not in the sense of like, we need more time. It's we need an explanation. We need to understand this. We need to, we need to connect with that villain. No spoilers for Infinity War, but I will say if you see that film, you're going to have, you're, you're going to understand exactly what, is, what I'm saying here about being able to connect to a villain despite the fact yeah. that you don't agree. I was just going to nope. throw that in. Like, the Avengers had time to, like, play their stuff out yeah. and lead up to a villain. Like, the first Avengers didn't have Thanos in it. Like, yeah. you know, that didn't happen. But mm -hmm. the first, you know, Justice League had, like, this this crazy guy who, like, they should have had, like, a build-up to. Yeah. And, like, introduced it in the first movie, like, towards the end, say, oh, look, at like, here comes Steppenwolf, and then, like, mm -hmm. and then leave us all hanging for, like, a year or something like that to get us all anticipating waiting it. Yeah. And then throw him in there, which would have been way cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have done something else for the first movie, and also probably maybe spent a little more time on the characters. Yeah. I mean, some of them feel like we didn't need to, like the Flash, because there's been so much stuff coming out about him, I feel like we just know him a lot. I know. But, and like, I... Aquaman, like, nobody's ever made anything about Aquaman. It's just not a thing that's, like, TV series, Aquaman, and, like, all yeah. that kind of stuff, you know? He, he's not super marketable. I mean, like, you you can market him in a team. You can market him in, like, Injustice and that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I suppose he is marketable if you if you know, like, how to do it. But they DC doesn't typically market him alone. He's always either part of the team. He's an enemy of somebody, or yeah. you know, they. It's it's um, it's and it's also really hard to make water look real yeah. in underwater sequences that oh, aren't really? actually underwater. Yeah. And for the Aquaman movie, probably a good portion of it's going to be underwater. Yeah. So you know, Atlantis. So they're going to have to put a lot of money into the CGI there. So yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that goes just on the on the sheer effort, but I'm totally gonna see that movie. I feel like a lot I'm of people totally would, there. I feel like everybody fell in love with the actor, especially girls. <laughs> yeah. Jason Momoa is like the man. The man. <laughs> My man. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason Momoa was just super amazing. I mean, he brought a whole new flavor to the character. Just his yeah. appearance, the the tattoos, um, you know, just his swagger. Uh, and how, like, rough he is, too. Like, rough yeah. looking. He, yeah, how yeah. rough and, and beastly he is. I mean, he's just... He's amazing. And I hope that um, when Marvel does Namor, that they can kind of... I don't I don't want them to change Namor from, from who he was in the comics. But the character that Jason Momoa brings, just this, like... This bad dude, you know? Like, he's, yeah. like, a rough dude you don't want to mess with. That's what Namor is. Yeah. You know, he doesn't mess around with people. Yeah. Like, people, like, can either step out of his way or he'll just smack you, dude. You know? Yeah. And so it's like, I hope that Marvel will, will keep both eyes on DC while Aquaman is happening so that they can see, and I don't want them to copy them, but just so that they can see that, hey, an, an, an Atlantis story is very much possible. And um, even if people end up like, oh, Aquaman sucked or, you know, like, whatever that is, I have a feeling that after that, Marvel's going to be like, okay... This worked, this didn't. This worked, this didn't. This yeah. worked, this didn't. This worked, this didn't. All right, now here's our plan. You well, know? yeah, so because... Then, right. then, we'll, then we'll get to see something, either a Black Panther 2 or a Black Panther 3 or his own movie or something, where or maybe a future X-Men installment, because he is technically also a mutant, yeah. but he's not a... I don't think he's a Fox property. He's yeah. something else. And so... Um, but I would like to see him come back as an enemy of Black Panther, as he was in the comics, and uh, a friend of Captain America, so that it'll be like... Atlantis rises up against Wakanda because they hate each other. Yeah. You know, T'Challa uh, and then Namor go at it. And then the Avengers are like, wait, we know T'Challa. He's a good man. But then who's this? And it's like, oh, they, Captain America's like, oh, I, I worked with him back in World War II. I've seen this guy. He's a legend. You know, he's a great yeah. guy. But, you know, it, they must be doing something wrong. There's some sort of eco battle or whatever. Marvel would love to get their it's hands on It's like a little baby it. civil war going on. It's like a, well, it's a bigger <laughs> civil war because then it's, then the heroes have to decide who they think is right. Yeah. You know? And many of them have already fought Black Panther. Yeah. You know? So it's like, they've, they've already been on the opposite side as yeah. Black Panther. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it could be a lot of fun to watch that whole scenario unfold. And even to get an opportunity to see Bucky back as the White Wolf, as a servant of Wakanda, and, you know, allegiant to the throne. I think it would be really cool to get some action there. You get some sick fight scenes out of that. That would be dope. I'd be stoked for that. Yeah, I actually just I actually just followed on Instagram the uh, 
uh, the stunt double for the Winter Soldier. Oh, really? Yeah, he was in Infinity War. <laughs> I forget his name. I'll, I'll show him to you after. Okay, but cool. It was well, pretty tight. He's got a bunch of pics on set and stuff with like yeah. Sebastian and all that stuff. So. Um, so, I have a question for you then. Yes, please. What do you think's in store for... Do you think that there's going to be more Justice Leagues after this? Dude, after I... the first one, after it kind of like... I don't want to say it flopped, but I feel like a lot of people didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Justice League is going to try to make a ton of individual films before they do another one? Or is it going to be pretty quick for them to try to make another one? Or I have a feeling that they are going to move forward with things they know that are safe. Like a solo Batman film that is neither confirmed nor denied to be part of the universe. Probably starting about how his parents died and all that. So yeah, it'll, it'll probably... <laughs> yeah, probably, we need to see it again. Probably another origin story is about... <laughs> it's probably about that time right now. Yeah, it's been a few years. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, and so I think I think we'll probably get like that. We'll probably... I know that they're planning Man of Steel 2, but they keep slating it further and further and further. Yeah. So, like, they're trying to put stuff together they want to happen first and then build to a second one. Yeah. Shazam is coming out. Shazam is, I think, getting ready to wrap or something like that. Like, it's, it's yeah. well into development, I believe. Um, Aquaman's already filmed and shot's done. Flashpoint's already confirmed. That's already happening. Um, so we're at least getting those three. And then there's, of course, talk of other projects that are big films. Su- I think Suicide Squad 2 was in talks. I don't know if that's confirmed or denied at this point. Because they, they announced all this stuff, and now it's like, oh, it's yeah. whispers in the wind at this point. You yeah. know, so no news, no word, and they, you know, it's not even on any official, like, lists anymore. So yeah. it's, it's hard to say with those. But I do think that um, fans are going to cry out. All the DC fans want Justice League. The problem is we want it right, and it's hard to trust WB at this point. And so... WB, you know, they can't get a straight poll whether or not people want certain things. So they're just pulling stuff out of their out of their butt, like, like we're, we're going to get a Lobo film, and we're going to do, you know, like, we might, we're talking about maybe a Swamp Thing, you know, they're actually, they're actually talking about a Swamp Thing TV show. So, you know the DC streaming service? Yeah. So it's going to be like Hulu or Netflix or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but it's going to be the, it, they, they're calling it DC Universe, kind of like DC Universe Online, but it's just DC Universe and it's a subscription platform they're they're creating that's going to have Young Justice season three, which we've all been waiting for yeah. for a really long time. We want some Ten more years. Heck yeah! <laughs> dude. Um, there there is talk of um, a Harley Harley Quinn TV show, which is confirmed now, and Margot Robbie is coming back to voice it. It's animated, so that's cool. All right. Yeah, and then there's going to be um, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I don't I didn't have any notes for this. But the, um, what was it? Uh, Shannon, what did I mention the other day? Um, there's Young Justice, Swamp Thing, oh, Harley Quinn. Teen Titans. Yeah, Titans. Okay, yeah, so Titans, the live action show, is going to be exclusive on there as well. All these things are going to be exclusive. So they're really like saying, if you want any more DC after this point, you have to subscribe to this yeah. thing. And I'm, all, I'm actually okay with that because I love DC and I would love to have like, and they, they have to produce tons of content for it to be um, enough for people to subscribe, right? Yeah. I mean, you're not going to pay, like, ten bucks a month every month two, to watch two, two shows. <laughs> yeah, you're done, and then you're just like, I'm just going to keep paying because I love DC. It's yeah. Like, I, I like want content. My movie. Yeah, I want content. I want continuing shows, but there's there's talk of a lot of, a lot of really cool projects, and one of them being Metropolis. It's a show revolving around Lex Luthor, and mm-hmm. Lex Luthor is the main character. And I'm actually really excited because Smallville was awesome and Lex Luthor was my favorite part of that because they focused a lot of the... It was split. You know, you could see the show from Lex's perspective. You could see the show from Clark's perspective. You know, sometimes you'd see from the parents. Sometimes you'd see from Lana. Sometimes... And it would follow different people, right? Yeah. But being able to see from the eyes of Lex was the most unique story that we got to see because he's just like... At first, he wasn't a terrible guy. He had his secrets, but it was it was mostly because of upbringing yeah. and his nature, growing up with his dad, and his dad was sick, and then, you know it's like yeah. uh, he he became like the king of monster people. You know, he's like he's still a person, but he's and he's doing what he believes is right for the world in his own eyes, but his eyes are distorted. Yeah, you know, so it's like it's it's, it's a cool story. It's a really cool story. I think they could do a lot with Metropolis. Um, I'm really excited for that show. I hope they focus on something like that and they don't like mm-hmm. 
go in another direction. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like that's what everybody wants to see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope that they don't do another Superman TV show. I hope that I hope that we get Lex Luthor and and they they make the bad guy the protagonist, where he's the one you're almost rooting for to yeah. win, you know. And then Superman is this guy that thwarts his plan every day. Yeah. And it's like, I'll get you, you know, like something, you know, like I want to see that struggle. Yeah. I want to see him being the most brilliant man in the world and having little yeah. successes behind the back of the public and then his public efforts getting thwarted by Superman. That would yeah. be sick. That would be super dope. That would be sick. I would love I'm all I'm all on board for that. Just take my money. Yeah. And uh um, take my credit card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's tons of like really cool stuff coming to the DC streaming service, but the cool announcement and it was kind of sly was they said that um before announcing all of the shows, they said um one cool one cool feature that will be on the streaming service is and then they listed all of the shows which means there's probably other things we might even get a subscription to like comics like certain comics oh, might wow. flood in you might be able to watch it on the streaming service or you might have you know like we don't know what it is exactly yeah. so they, they listed all that stuff so that it would become like a um just and then one one part of whatever it is they're going to also offer. And obviously, to be competitive, they have to have tons of content, right? Yeah. So if they're kicking off with one, two, three, four, five, maybe five shows, that's great. But then what else are they going to have to draw in customers? Yeah. They have to have something. So probably reading subscriptions to maybe comic books or access to the comic books. Like other Netflix. benefits to their subscription other, other than just TV shows. Exactly. You, you remember the video game that I played like relentlessly last year? DC Universe Online? Yeah. Last year? Is it not anymore? I haven't played this year. I've been busy with my with my channel. I've been busy doing this, so I actually... What's important in life. Yeah, exactly. I've redistributed my efforts so that I could make content for you guys. As a promise to you guys that I made December 31st last year. And I've held it. I have not played any video games. Praise so, the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> my wife's very happy. And, uh, you know... It's, it's a sacrifice. It's been cool. I've actually learned some cool skills. Photoshop, Adobe, you know... Uh, Premiere and you know Illustrator, some other things. You know, I've been making my own thumbnails. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to be creative. So I like that. And I've also been getting new new equipment, you know, camera stuff and, and that kind of stuff. I still use my phone for recording, which I'm using right now, but it's good. And so, Hello. one thing I wanted to ask you about, in addition to the whole like streaming service and Suicide Squad and all this DC stuff, which I love and you love, but the end credits, and this is a, this is gonna be a spoiler, but just you should have already seen it by now. If you haven't seen Justice League by now, you shame can't beat around the bush anymore. It's been too long. It's been too long, and you can just go red box that stuff. Yeah. You should you should already be watching that. Or illegally watch it online. The end credits <laughs> of Justice League, dude. The boat. Yeah. Okay. When that happened, like I watched the movie and I was like, cool movie. Like they better have some after credits, like Marvel. <laughs> that was like my first thought. And just sitting there, and then as it happened, I was like, like, I was already ready for that. Yeah. I don't mean to be mean towards Justice League, but I was ready for whatever was next to come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I almost forgot. I was like, yeah, yeah, totally. Honestly, that made the movie. It did. That made the movie. Nobody asked for your opinion, okay? Except for you just did. That's my wife you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <kidding. laughs> no, but I fully, Shannon, I fully 100% agree with yeah. you, who was on the other side of the camera. Um, AKA, not you, Brady. Yeah. The after credit of the Justice League was probably my favorite after credit scene since Iron Man 2's after credit scene where he he does the Avengers call. You know, like, and it's like, it's time to... Do something dope. Get the Avengers... <laughs> yeah, time... It, yeah, he's like... He's something like, cool's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. There was an idea. Yeah. You know, to put together a team of remarkable people, you know? So, like, it's that, it's that whole, like, call to action, but now it's for the bad guys. And a lot of people have issue with Jesse Eisenberg. I actually kind of like Jesse Eisenberg. I didn't like him a lot. My favorite Lex Luthor to date is still Michael Rosenbaum. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it always will be. Someone's going to have to be pretty dang fantastic. You're going to have to be like Vincent D'Onofrio as, as Wilson Fisk. That good to beat Michael Rosenbaum as, as Lex Luthor. He was Lex Luthor. He is Lex Luthor. He's perfect. Yeah. So in my head, you know, like you might have another opinion that's totally fine. But... For me, he was just the tops, and so, but, but, when we see Slade on the boat, okay. and you see the tassels coming off the back of his head, yeah, and you see, you know, like the boat's just like pulling up, and he gets off, and Joe Manganiello steps up, and is like, he's like, well, 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 you know, you, 
you know, he's doing his like Jesse Eisenberg like little you know thing. Yeah. He's actually less Jesse Eisenberg there than he has been up yeah. to this point, which I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. They want a more serious Lex Luthor, I think. Yeah. But I thought he was he was fine in the after credit, and just the call to a, a league of our own. Yeah. Dude. And the, and and one of the things that I thought was really cool is when. When Slade first walks up on that boat in his full uniform, mm -hmm. it's like we haven't really seen his like his outfit yet. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that because he's getting like literally a thirty second scene that they were just gonna like make something cheap. Like it's only gonna be thirty seconds and mm -hmm. it's in the dark. Yeah. And his costume was so legit that it got me all the more stoked for it. Like when I saw it, I was like, Oh god, that's perfect. Dude, my heart <laughs> rate went up like fourteen beats a minute. Yeah. It was like and I it was just like I was just on edge. I was like, Oh my gosh, dude, I look didn't at his suit. It. His suit looks so good. His suit was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I want it. I want the pop doll for it. I don't have it. I have an old school. You can't see it. It's not in the shot. But I have an old school Deathstroke, and then I have the Slade Wilson Deathstroke from the um, Arrow TV show, but it's with the mask. And um, I want to get the one where he just has the eye patch because I love Manu Bennett as Deathstroke. He's amazing as Slade. But but I love Joe Manganiello. I love Joe Manganiello, and I loved him uh, in that after credit scene. They, they did his hair white. The eye patch looked awesome. Yeah. Um, everything looked awesome. Everything looked just... Ugh, it it's was like, so don't end good. it now. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. And the dude is jacked. I mean, have you seen that guy? Have you seen that guy? His fitness? He's ripped. The guy is amazing. And he's he's been training martial arts for this role. How for, old is he? Oh, uh, you know what? I think he's probably like 40. But... He's that like, just reminds me of... It's uh, like Hugh Jackman's... Yeah, like, that's what? What I was exactly you know, what I like, said. Like, at least 95 by now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's shredded. Yeah. <laughs> he's completely shredded. Yeah, 95. <laughs> he's shredded. <right. laughs> the movies aren't real, you know, right? What? What? But I swear. I... Yeah, dude, he's, he's amazing. Yeah, he didn't fight in the Civil War, dude. Which would be hundreds of years. He lied to all this time. It's amazing. It's impressive. Well... I just wanted to uh, come out here and just talk to my friend Brady, my brother. He is actually kind of almost my brother. He is my brother's brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So he is a brother um, by a chain of brothers. Yeah, many brothers. A short chain of brothers. Like a brotherhood. Yeah. Short chain of brothers sounds like a band name. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to do it. You'll play no bass. girls allowed. No girls. <laughs> yeah. All girls. No cooties. Yeah. I'm just jealous of that <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, next time we'll have to have Shannon or Kyle on. Kyle's going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to force him on the channel. That's going to be amazing. I'm bringing my duct tape and my rope just in case you don't want to be up here. Yeah. And we'll just record. No, we'll just duct tape in anyway. He'll duct tape his mouth shut and he'll just sit here. And if you don't want to talk, and I'll talk to the camera. Yeah. And I'll bring my torch and be at his feet in case you don't want to talk. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. It. <laughs> and I'll, I'll ask him really like embarrassing and demeaning questions that are like really pointed yeah. just about his character. Yeah. I'm down for How he'd move away from his best friends. He's pretty quiet, so I feel like he'd get some pretty dark secrets out of him. I know, and he would just sit there and laugh through the duct tape. Yeah. He would. He would be all embarrassed. Yeah, I think that's great. why he shaved his beard, because I think we knew we were doing that. He oh, shaved yeah. his beard? Did well, he shave I, his beard? Well, Did I think he had it, and then Alicia was what? like, I don't like that. And then he like, I saw him, and I was like, bro, why does your face look like a baby's butt? <laughs> and, and he was like, well, what if we do it? And I was like, well, that's gay. <laughs> and I looked at that. Then we went dirt biking. I was like, "Cool." Just I keep think wearing the helmet because I don't want to see you without it. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, don't I think see your disgusting face. Anymore. I think that that right there is the perfect place to end this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a Justice League fan talk. So you can get to know me. You can get to know Brady. And uh, he's always around. I'll have to have you on for some more discussions, like Lord of the Rings. I know you're a huge fan. And, um, you know, we'll, discussion for another time. Yeah. But we totally got to keep talking, man. So and no. we'll go, you know what, let's do a Predator review. Let's go see yes. that one. Predator trailer dropped a couple days ago. That's going to be awesome. So uh, thank you so much for coming on board. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, every time. And uh, give this video a like. Share it if you love it. If you hate it, share it with your enemies. And also, please make sure to comment down below. Uh, we love talking with you guys about the movies, about your favorite, who's your favorite Justice League character, did you like the movie, did you not like the movie, which director did you like better, do you think that Joss Whedon improved it, probably not, did you think that Zack Snyder did a good job, uh, maybe uh, you'd like to see somebody else, some original cast members of the Justice League join the team.
for a next installment. Maybe they will have enough confidence. Maybe WB and DC will have enough confidence to do a Justice League 2. Or a uh, Justice League Dark. Yeah. That I mean, would be cool. That would be a lot of fun. I feel like after they do a few movies, they can really step out of what used to be their comfort zone. Which yeah. would not be their comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. I know their comfort zone seems to be everything but what would be comfortable for them. Yeah. Like just doing what the fans want. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we know we've like had comic books about this, but it's kind of uncomfortable for us, so. Yeah. Anyways. It's like, why are we here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. You guys, uh, stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And then also, please hit the notification bell to be notified right away when I upload this video or when I go live next time. Because I'm going to be doing a lot more live streams. And then uh, we'll be able to interact in the chat. You guys will be able to ask me questions in live and I will be able to respond to you guys. And that will be a lot of fun because I love discussing this stuff with you guys. So, you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys next time right here on... The stuff. Okay. You were supposed to say it too. You were supposed to say it too, dude. <laughs> <laughs>